number 395, part two here, and it's time to be a better gamer. Oh yeah, we've been looking at Bomber's delightfully simple structure drawn out in MS Paint. Fast three orbital commands where we're going to rely on that beautiful factory in the top right and get all sorts of marine upgrades started early. But when I say upgrades, I don't mean combat shield and stim. How crazy it is that literally at 11 minutes and 40 seconds into the game, stim is not done and yet plus two plus one has been started. It's these three unit producing structures. Again, I want you to ignore this one for now. These early upgrades. And then as we move out to here, that's when it's time to get ourselves another factory, a bunch more barracks, a bunch more starports up. Literally, right around the time that the, these upgrades get started, that's when you see the explosion of more stuff, the explosion of extra buildings and all this goody goodness. Now, some of you might be saying, well, why day nine? I mean, I can maybe understand if you say something like, um, damn it, I tried to, where's my MS Paint? There it is, cool. I can understand you being like, well, day nine, wh why not just put a third barracks in here? What's wrong with building this third barracks every time? The important thing is that there are variations, not just with this build, but with almost any build in any matchup at any time. And it's important that you can see, for instance, 15 games of OGS MC and see there's this core that always shows up. It's kind of like the Observer in the TV show The Fringe. He's in every single episode. He's always there. You just have to know to look for him. What I want you to do is in all these games that Bomber's going to be coming up with in the future, that um, obviously I can't show you because I unfortunately can't reach into the future, I don't have those abilities, um, look for that core of those buildings. And we're going to be pointing out a lot of those. So again, in this thing, ignore this. Sure, you want uh, more barracks with reactors at some point. I guess what I'm saying is that you should all go watch the um, Fringe. That's a really great TV show. All right, cool. Bomber, literally, how much scouting has he done? He has done no scanning. None at all. Complete. When is he building these factories and these extra barracks? After he's getting these 2-1 upgrades started. When does he build his first Thor? Way down the line. Way down the line. He's almost max. He's at like two-thirds of the way max before he starts his first Thor. Don't go Thor crazy. Go Marine and turret crazy. I mean, I'm talking serious turret crazy. There is nothing wrong with building a lot of turrets when you are doing this big macro build. Because you ain't going to be attacking for a long time, so you have to make sure that you take minimum damage. And, gee, three kills where most of this is canceled resources? That's quite good. Idra's having a very hard time piercing through doing anything. And at this point, it's literally just churn out units and do not for the life of you, miss one of these upgrades. You can get this plus one weapon armor, or excuse me, weapon attack. Don't do it too fast. Pretty straightforward stuff at this point in time. And when you start to get close to max, that's when it's time to move out. Now we have done no harassment. Idra has gotten to do anything that he wants. Literally everything that Idra wanted to do, he got to do because Bomber never put pressure on. Fantastic. And at the same time, Bomber, has this very scary armor. That's why, army. This is why I love this. It's so easy to do. The one transition that is kind of the hard transition to catch, right when Bomber is going to move out with his scary ball of death, which, by the way, conveniently moves out right when he has this plus two weapons upgrade done. Right when he moves out, boom, 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 more barracks for more tech labs, and he's going to build two ghost academies. There's the scan. Oh, it's a layer. No matter. As he's moving out, notice all the precautions he takes when moving out. As he's moving out, has a ton of turrets back home as he's moving out. Leaves a Thor back home as he's moving out. Ton of turrets on the right, more being constructed as he's moving out. Uh, sensor towers being set up. I think there's another one that gets planted up here. All these precautionary measures. Boom, plus two, up, plus two attack finish, time to move out. Shadoosh. There's your plus three attack. Base is under attack. Mutilus coming in, but we're going to watch Startail Bomber kind of just drill his way forward. Ready for dust off. All right, come on. Come come on, little bomber. Come on, cute, cuddly little oh, yes. bomber. He's under attack. Oh. Under attack. 
build a fourth command center during your attack. And in a moment, we're going to see Ghost Academies. Yay! And all Bomber does from here is he just attacks and slowly moves up. As just a note, it's fine to be slow. Don't worry about rushing and freaking out and thinking that you need to kill him off immediately because if you don't, he's going to beat you to blue lords. In this circumstance, Bomber does these nice, slow and steady pushes. It's really hard to deal with because his Marines are 2-2 by the time that you're able to engage him. And now he's making ghosts. These are going to be ghosts real freaking soon. It's actually a little bit of a mistake that these were marines instead of ghosts. Yeah, there's the ghost finally getting made. Really slow. In, in a build like this, you want to target expansions. And when you start cutting him down on expansions, just regroup. You don't have to force the issue. Uh, I don't know if there's too much more that I want to say about this game. Uh, Bomber ends up with a bunch of ghosts and then just does some slaying. Complete. He goes to battle once he gets his creep tumors cleaned up. Idra, ridiculously, stupidly good in these direct uh, macro battles. But if someone like Bomber can pull off this kind of build by building a ridiculous excess of turrets and having virtually no pressure put on Idra, then you can do it too. You can do it. Yeah, love this build. In about two minutes, Idra's going to leave because ghosts are really good. Upgrade complete. So I want to zoom it forward. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Mineral field. Isn't this interesting to note? The first drop of the entire game. 20 minutes. And this happens right as he's doing another huge push. You don't have to have amazing multitasking. All you have to do is be able to hit the A button occasionally the T button, and eventually the G button to build some ghosts. And if you can do that, then you're the best player in the world, you guys. You've got this. Here he comes. Here he comes. Transition of ghosts. Pretty important one. Boom. Great. Now, one thing that I emphasized quite a bit was that there's a lot of different openings that you can do with this. Let's look at two different openings. We're going to watch another game of his from Orlando... Oh god, I hope it was in the pool play. I think it was near the bottom. It was him versus Chef. Oh man, where is it? Thank god, there it is. Yes! God, there's so many replays from that tournament. In this game, we're going to see completely different map, different player, different positions. Everything's uh, different. <laughs> and yet still, the same build is flexible enough. Now, Antigua Shipyard has a very easy-to-take third. This map does not have a particularly easy-to-take third. Let's talk about the differences in the opening between um, this game and the last game. But most importantly, let's look for these buildings. Three command centers, siege tank with factories, two barracks, and an eBay. All right. Speeding it on up. Going to the bomber camp. Bam. Bam. No doubt, Chef. Oh, didn't say good luck, have fun. Oh my god, Chef. He somehow is filled with rage. Or these replays have had their text stripped out. I can't tell, because Idra left without GG in the last game, I think. Very common. <laughs> oh, yeah, it looks like Bomber. Okay, he's gonna go. It looks like, again, for some sort of early refinery. But not too early. It's a refinery on around 16. Around 15. And he's gonna be building... Uh, it looks like a command center first, but look at this. Bomber decided that he was going to try to be a little bit more aggressive this game. Cancels, builds this command center, no problem. Slight difference, moved out with his marines a little bit more aggressively. Other than that, pulling right on home. And there is the factory to follow it up. And there's the reactor. Pretty similar. We did do a bunker in this game when we contrast it to last game. But overall, things are pretty much the same. Here is our second barracks going up. In that last game, we built a third command center already. We didn't get this other barracks up. But no big deal. In this game, we're getting more Hellions. I told you not to obsess about that third barracks. I freaking told you, dude. Dude, man, dude, I told you, bro. Here he is already putting on a little bit of pressure with these Hellions. Once he gets four, you generally don't want more than four. Once he gets four, he does that magical swap -aroo. There is a command center going down. All is well in the world. And I think that 
you'll kind of know, interestingly enough, something is messed up in this build order from a perfectionist standpoint, right? Ideally, our factories, our barracks, our uh, command centers would constantly be building stuff and we'd always had, we would always have the money to build out of them. But something seems to have gone awry. We're getting the buildings down, but I can't quite make a tank and siege mode yet. I can't quite make out of all these barracks. My SCV count is at least continuing up. Why do I highlight this moment right now? To point out that Bomber is going to be like a freaking bulldozer in this game with the basic idea of his build represented by this picture. The basic idea of his build is so good that even with slightly off execution, which is what I'm sure many of you will experience when you first try it, even with slightly off center execution, it's gonna feel great. So in this game, what is Bomber up against? He is up against something completely different, a fast third base. He's up against not a fast layer, but fast roaches from Liquid Chef. Let's see how it pans out. I'm sure, as you can imagine, the answer is going to be pretty much no difference at all. What are the one piece, or what are the pieces that we're missing right now? Well, I would say that we really need that engineering bay up. Because Day9 said how important upgrades are, and Day9 does his best to lie as little as possible. Oh, we have some crises going on with the Zerglings. We lose a tank. It's really tragic. We haven't started this upgrade yet. Bomber even messed up the timing on this refinery, getting it a little bit too late. Uh-oh, building a second refinery to catch up. We're almost at this core. We're almost there. We're almost there. Come on, Bomber. Come on, get that last little piece of the puzzle in. Frickin' jerk building this barracks early on. Such a blunder. I actually can't believe he did that. I actually can't believe he built that barracks before building the engineering bay. Come on, come on, build it. <laughs> come on, come on, Bomber. Come on, you're making me look like an idiot, man. There we go. Whoo, good thing I avoided looking like an idiot. There it is. Whoo, whoo, oh, oh, man. Wow, that was good. That felt perfect. Whoa. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, this water is so good. Maybe it's time to go on to part three. I still don't care what you say about that third barracks. I, it's important to ignore for more reasons than what I'm going to show you, because when I was at the Red Bull LAN, that's what he said. Fast engineering bay, marine imba, were his words. Whoo! Bomber, get your shit together, man. I want to emphasize again how these gas geysers were delayed. So that probably is a motivating factor for him delaying this engineering bay, because you'll know if he got it earlier, he actually physically does not have the gas to do it. So I, you heard me say that this gas was a blunder. What probably happened here is that he got his geysers late and then went, whoopsie daisies. Ooh, God, better get my engineering bay a little bit delayed as well. Either way, expands. And what do we do after we've expanded? This is around the time that we want to get the starport up. And then it's chilling time. It's time to chill. Come on. Come on, get the plus one bomber. Come on. Reactor coming on up. But there's a prevalence of tanks, bunkers, general defensive structures. And you're kind of noticing that Bomber doesn't actually do anything different. He's building these turrets when? Well, I said to get it around the 10 minute mark if your opponent is going fast layer. If your opponent is going delayed layer, I don't know, 11, 12 minute mark? That seems good. Won't actually affect your build that much. And goodness gracious, right when we're getting our third up, we add on two more barracks and a second factory to get maximum units up. Research. When did we say that we wanted to push? Well, around the time 2-1 is finishing up. And also around that time, we want to begin getting ghosts. Now, in this particular situation, we see the bomber is going for these medevacs. I want to emphasize in this game how late he's getting those drops. You are not prevented from getting drops. In game number one against Idra, the important concept was that we could just attack the front against one of the best macroing players alive after putting no pressure on him and still win. 
Now that Bomber is playing against, again, one of the best macro Zergs alive, it's completely fine to drop. Nothing wrong with dropping. In fact, I would almost encourage dropping if your opponent went for uh, delayed Mutalisks. Oftentimes, you can get away with doing a little bit of damage right when they have Roaches. But still, kind of funny to note, what did Bomber do? He moved out with those drops and pulled them right back. Literally did not drop. <laughs> Literally did not drop. Adding these more barracks, these will likely have Tech Lab add-ons placed on them. I want you to notice the flexibility of placing three Tech Lab add-ons on these three barracks. The final step before you attack is to add on three barracks with Tech Labs. If you add those three barracks on and get Tech Labs, if he goes Ultralisk, you can begin making a whole bunch of Marauders. If he's going for Broodlords, you can go a whole bunch of Ghosts. If he's going Ultralisk and being very passive, you can again get a whole bunch of Ghosts. We move out to attack. We want to take this base. Why is Bomber not gunning to go kill off his opponent yet? Because he doesn't have plus two. Are you starting to see why I thought this was such a huge bad idea? He's maxed. It should be time to go, but he can't. He can't. His attack is totally impotent. And yes, I did use the word impotent intentionally to assault Bomber's manhood and make him feel shameful it is to get that late engineering bay. And these are... Oh, he's building reactors because, in his words, Marine Imba. Even though he is getting these Ghost Academies up, uh, you will eventually need to get the extra three barracks with three tech labs. Oh! I'm a little torn. I'm a little torn on getting the reactors in this particular situation. We've seen our opponent go Roach, and then we saw him go Muta, which means that his Hive has to be delayed by a little bit. So technically, we can drill a little harder with our Marines. So I don't know. I still kind of want to lean towards the Ghosts, but I don't think that this is a mistake by any means. This, I think, was... Oh, Get those upgrades, man. Upgrades are delightful. They're delicious. They're delectable. And building a crap ton of command centers because orbital commands are the man. Upgrade complete. Now, I'm going to start speeding up this game uh, so that way we can wrap it up before going into part number three. But Bomber is not scared to play defensively at all. He's doing these smart little things with these nice uh, little sandbag walls but with his bunkers behind, almost as though he is... Playing company of heroes. Just taking the gold, which always seems like a good idea. And now we see Bomber forced to build two more barracks to get two more tech labs, because he really does need these ghosts up if he wants to be able to deal with some of that late game tech. Despite all this that has gone on, Bomber has made no attacks and it was way ahead of his opponent in food. The only reason Sheth popped back up is because he just made eight Ultralisks. This is one of the easier styles to pull off with limited repetition. Especially if you're, uh, I guess I would describe like a casually competitive, like a, like a, like a casual tryhard. You're someone who takes the game seriously in the five games that you play every week. I think that this build is perfect. This is like the greatest thing ever. You build tons of tanks, siege them up, lead with marines, get crushed, no big deal. You have so many units being built so quickly that you snipe the Ultralisks down, losing bases, limited amount of dropping. All Bomber's actually really done this game is just defend and build ghosts, and it's still nearly impossible for the opponent to do anything. And because, yeah, I guess we'll go just a smidge longer on part number two. I don't think there's too much more that noteworthy. The amount of orbital commands, I guess, is pretty neat. But the reason why I like getting those four Tech Lab barracks right as I'm pushing out, when I'm first maxed, I can begin ra um, uh, I can begin racking up a bunch of ghosts. And there's the Marauders. Yeah, I love Marauders. And in the, I guess, the second attack ever this game... The second attack ever, we win. The first attack happened here. We did a bunch of counterattack defending. I think we dropped here once. Boom. 
done. We're like 3-3-3 three, three, three across the board. We have a ton of ghosts. Uh, statue explodes. Come on, Chip. Come on. One note that I want to, I guess, the last thing I'd want to say about the style of play is the way ghosts interact with shift Q on snipe. This might be the most important late game tip for ghosts ever. Snipe doesn't work properly with shift queuing, no matter how you do it. It does not work properly. Um, because it has to do with, I guess, some internal algorithm um, with how it picks what ghost is going to do the snipe next. Let's say, for instance, we have two ghosts like this, and let's say they're trying to snipe my nose, because my nose is one of the most powerful forces of the swarm. And it's a biological unit, so you, so you can still cast the ability on it. So um, let's say you want to have this ghost and this ghost. You select them together, and you just hit R, and you click on my nose. What happens? The closest ghost pew, shoots my nose. What if you hit Shift and hit R twice? This ghost is out of range. So they start walking up, and suddenly this ghost gets in range, pew, and it shoots. And what should happen is this one should walk up and then shoot again. So it should be like, chew, chew. And that's the way it should work. But what happens is it goes, chew, and it shoots once. Who receives the next shift snipe command? Not the second ghost, but this one receives it in a good amount of, of, of circumstances. This especially becomes a big problem when you have like 10 ghosts and, for instance, a bunch of banelings are rolling at you and you want to do like shift, click, 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 click. And what you'd want is for them to go, and just like rapid fire kill everything like it's um, the Terminator. But in reality what happens is you get that first snipe off the choo from the closest ghost. Then he, who still is in a cooldown phase, gets a new command to snipe. So he reloads and then he snipes the second Baneling and then everything else dies. So in other words, the only way that you can get really rapid snipes consistently is to R click. R click, R click, not shift R click, 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 not, you know, anything that involves a shift button. You just R, just like, just do that. With the... That is the only way. And the reason I know this is because I, for a while, was trying this weird double ghost. Like, I would go to Barracks ghost opening. And a big thing I was having trouble with um, was big thing I was having trouble with was dealing with Banelings early at the start of the game. But I had a frick ton. Frick ton of, um... Where did my train of thought go? Oh yeah, I had a frick ton of energy, so I could just easily snipe. Um, but with all the shift commands I was doing, it wasn't working. And finally I was like, okay, screw this. I'm just gonna test this out. So, um, everything that involves shift sucks. There's some creative things that you can do. Um, I mean, you could, for instance, hold R down, just hold R and just do that sort of thing. Um, sometimes Windows freaks out and is like, oh my god, sticky keys. Um, but you can disable that setting. Another thing that Morrow did that's very clever is he took the scroll wheel, scroll up and scroll down, and bound it to snipe. So he just holds the mouse over and just goes... Rup, rup. So you know how, like, this thing, like... That wheel, that's a couple hundred... Um, commands that are happening really quickly. So you're just going rup, 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 and it just it's like the fastest snipe ever. Uh, I'm not good enough to do that, so I just I just spam a lot. But that's your lesson on snipe. In part number three, what I want to look at is when things can go wrong with bomber's play. We're gonna see again it's incredible, ridiculous strength, but there's gonna be some issues with um, recovering when we lose some of those key buildings. So for now, I'm going to go away. I'll see you in a little bit for part number three. And yeah, I see everyone in the chat talking about how much of a bad